we are doing a defensive masterclass so we're turning to Nathan to pick the depth chart <laughs> of uh, the Republic of wow. Ireland squad, squad is being announced tomorrow uh, tomorrow week of course is the Portugal game uh, these international breaks really creep up on us but what we're going to do this morning Nathan is go through uh, the different positions in Ireland's defence and deliver your depth chart. Right. You ready right. for this? this? I've been hung out to dry here because Kenny Cunningham is already, his eyes are piercing through me here. <laughs> yeah, he's usually got his pulse on uh, Nathan in terms of what the Irish football... Well, listen, football I'm, I'm, I'm more going with what I think Stephen here, Kenny huh? is uh, thinking Oh, you're trying right to get inside now. Stephen Kenny's mind? mind. Interesting. Um, so if, if everyone's fit and at the moment, uh, there's not too many injury problems. The squad's being announced uh, tomorrow afternoon. Obviously, Darrell Shea is still out, but... Everyone fit, I think he will go back to the defence that ended the game and played so well, by and large, in Portugal with Coleman, Omavamadele, Duffy, Egan and Doherty at left wing back. Uh, I think if Seamus Coleman isn't fit, Matt Doherty is second choice, right wing back. And then if both of them are out, Cyrus Christie is probably in there. The left wing back position is one of the more interesting ones mm. in that. I think Doherty is now probably first choice. And maybe James McLean has moved ahead of Enda Stevens. Enda Stevens has probably been the big loser of the last year. He's had all sorts of injury problems. We've gone from a position where when Stephen Kenny took over, there was so much change happening that Enda Stevens was probably the first name of the team sheet. He was the one guy you thought, left back, left wing back, Enda Stevens is going to play. But he played against Qatar. I thought he was okay. I'm not sure how much we're reading into that. But has barely played in the last six months, has got back in at Sheffield United, is fully fit. And it'll be interesting to see how much stock Stephen Kenny puts in what Enda Stevens has done before and what he's done over the past month. And does he see, still see him as a better option? Because I thought Doherty at left wing back was exceptional that night. And I'd be surprised if he doesn't start the next night. And McLean is in probably the best form he's been in in a number of years at club level. He's scoring goals yeah. and seems to fit that left wing back position perfectly for what Stephen Kenny wants. So I think it's Coleman, Doherty, Christie on the right-hand side, and then probably Doherty, McLean, Stevens at the moment on the left-hand side. I agree, we couldn't argue too much what you've said there. All I will say with Enda Stevens, which I think is good to have him in the squad, I think he's more than capable of Enda fitting in and playing the left side of a three, at that back three. I think actually that's a position he might actually play more of when he when he gets a little uh, a bit older, because I think he's a very competent defender, Enda. And I think having somebody playing in that back three who's very co good defender you can trust, but also very comfortable ball and travelling out and into midfield, and looking to and be progressive with their passing, I think it's a big asset. So in terms of the left wing back position, I'd, I'd agree with you. I think people have overtaken. That's what happens in international football when you're out. But for me, and the, potentially going forward, there'll be a stronger argument for maybe his inclusion playing left side of a three than there potentially will be as a left wing back. You'd have Doherty ahead of McLean. Yeah, I'd put Matt in ahead. It's a tough call. I think I think James has done really well the past. A uh, couple of games, I'd probably just lean towards probably looking back to that Portugal game. Really, where fellas, if the balance of that back five was really good, Seamus and Matt operating on both sides. So, and Matt's played well as well for Ireland of late. I'd say I have his performance have been a high standard as well. So, that'd be a tough call. Um, if Seamus plays right wing back, like Nathan is suggesting, well, that night in Portugal was maybe Seamus Coleman's best performance in a in Ireland jersey. Certainly in in recent years, it still feels like a massive mistake that they moved him back to centre back for the game against Portugal. I know Azerbaijan yeah. or against Azerbaijan, but I don't think it was a mistake, Nathan, in terms of the fact that he can't play. I'd make the similar argument. Uh, Shame is playing right at the threes. I would um, end the playing a left. We're saying he's more than capable. Mm. He gives you those football and qualities to actually play out, which Stephen is looking for. But I think you're right in terms of just upsetting the balance then in terms of Matt flipping over to the other side and then bringing James in. You had to make another two adjustments there to make that change. So probably all in all... Where actually yeah, it turns out that Oma Bamadele would, probably would have been perfectly fine yeah. to start mm. that game. Yeah. Uh, like, geez, we're well stocked defensively at the moment. Stephen Kenny said it when he took over the job that, and I think at that stage he was probably looking at a Coleman, Duffy, Egan, Stevens back four. I think he said if they're all fit, it's probably a top 10 international teams in Europe back four. Uh, Oma Bamadele is emerging. Like the young defenders that we have, Oma Bamadele is still only 19. Uh, Nathan Collins as well. Nathan Collins, who I mentioned was over at the Manchester City game, and he started for Burnley that day and was exceptional. Now, it's strange playing against City because they don't have a striker at the moment. Uh, made a mis couple of mistakes in the last couple of minutes. Maybe the yeah. concentration levels went. But this lad is a unit. Mm -hmm. Six foot four, built like a tank. And already you're looking at him thinking, he is going to be pushing for... John Egan or Shane Duffy or maybe and this is the other conundrum for Stephen Kenny Oma Bamadela started for Norwich at the weekend 
Darryl Shea is injured at the moment, like maybe Collins, if Tarkowski goes to Newcastle in January, we know the way Sean Dyche works. When you're in, you're in. If Nathan Collins gets in in January, he's probably going to be in for the next few years if he performs to a level that suddenly he's the one who's playing first-team football every week and he's the one who's going to be starting for Ireland. Yeah. No, it's great to say. That's the only problem with him at Bourne in particular, but that combination Tarkowski and May, very rarely injured both of them he sticks with them like week and week a problem Kevin Long's had there really mm. for quite a considerable period of time so that's something Nathan's going to have to look at going forward in terms of game time because yeah the little bit that I've seen him play the qualities that you've mentioned and actually it's those other qualities just so big but so comfortable on the ball we got a bit of a flavour of it against Guitar he came on for like 20 minutes but just ball at his feet simple just punching it out to the right and left and travelling with the ball looked very comfortable I actually it's very similar to I, I mentioned it once I played with his old man actually skilled by football in Dublin, David Collins, who was a lovely player, very similar. Dave was powerful for his age, physically very powerful, but a lovely footballer. He went to Liverpool when he was very young, Dave, and he had a he had a career. So obviously it's been a help having Dave in his ear the past couple of years in terms of his development. But yeah, that's great to see. And I think you're right across that kind of defensive structure now. Uh Omar Bamadiele and Colin Nathan Collins in particular, really pushing pushing strong at the moment those players in there so yeah it's good to see so uh, assuming everybody is fit uh, which may not be the case with everybody in the centre of defence you're still going on with Bamadeli Duffy Egan and O'Shea first man up well O'Shea, O'Shea he is injured, he's obviously. injured at the moment but I think as we're looking uh, we probably need to start once Portugal is done start looking towards the next qualification campaign like Duffy and Egan aren't going anywhere they're still going to be in the squad but O'Shea looked as though he was going to be the main man until he picked up that injury. Oma Bamadale has probably gone in front of him. You hope O'Shea comes back and yeah. continues his potential, gets back into the Premier League. But I think it's going to be fascinating to see when Collins and O'Shea start to make that breakthrough. Obviously, Shane Duffy's back in top form again, so it's not going to happen anytime soon. Maybe John Egan, if doesn't get a move or if things don't work out with Sheffield United, is quickly looking over his shoulder, which is what you want, as you said, international level. You need these options. After that, then, you're waiting for the next generation probably to make the breakthrough because at the moment, he'll go with a Kevin Long in the squad but Kevin Long has spent season after season as you mentioned on the bench at Burnley gets minutes here Darrell Ennehan plays all the time yeah. it sort of feel like he could be one of those now traditional Republic of Ireland late developers at yeah, 27 he's been a bit of lucky Darrell Ennehan because any time he's come in he's had a couple of games he's some minutes on the pitch I think he's done absolutely fine to be honest with you I couldn't, couldn't mark him down he's looked kind of comfortable kept, in, uh, kept things simple which is what you want to do really as a centre half from a club and international football got to be able to trust your defenders do the simple things do the right things be good to, good decision makers he hasn't had a huge amount of time I think he's actually been a little bit unlucky Darrell Ennehan he's found himself out of the squad but that's only a reflection of the level of competition that we have in that area of the pitch now which is great yeah and then you're into a Jimmy Dunn who's not yeah. quite getting his game time yet at Queen's Park Rangers moved yeah. to Queen's Park Rangers but hasn't managed to fully break into the team yet and Kira Clark is the sort of wild card in that he hasn't retired from international football uh, he's playing sort of every second game for Newcastle at the moment in the Premier League. I sort of felt he was on the verge of something big with Ireland. And then that night against Serbia, he probably had fault for a couple of the goals. And I wonder, has that tarnished him in Stephen Kenny's mind? I don't know. It's just one of those things, I think, Nathan. You're out for a, for a period of time. This is international football. It's elite football. People come in and, and grab their, take their opportunity. And then you're, you're behind the, the curveball a little bit. It's not easy to fight your way back in. That's the way it should be, uh, to be honest with you. So I don't think the players you're mentioning there, I don't think it's a reflection. I don't necessarily think you have to look for oh, that one bad game or a massive drop off or something fundamentally is wrong here with his game. It's just the fact he's down the pecking order at the moment for whatever reason. Usually injury is generally mm. is generally the, the reason he's making about end of Stevens probably the best example of that. You've just got to fight your way back. You've got to keep banging on the door and work your way back in. That's the way it should be. Kieran Clark is in a relatively similar situation to Darren Randolph it seems that the guys in front of him are too good and too young to think that there will be a, a meaningful opportunity for him at any point over the next couple of years I think Clark has more reason to be frustrated though because Clark is playing for yeah. Newcastle whereas Randolph is third choice he's not even making the bench for West Ham and that's a decision he's obviously had to make whereas I think Clark is it's a tough time at Newcastle at the moment for anybody uh, and maybe not helping things I, I think he would feel he's definitely good enough to be in that squad ahead of couple, some of the other players but you're right Oma Bamadele has done nothing wrong Nathan Collins is such a talent you want him in there learning as much as you can and maybe Stephen Kenny looks at and thinks if Kieran Clark's not going to be playing 
is there a real benefit to him being in and around? He knows it. He knows if he needs him, he can slot back in quite easily. So, yeah, as I say, I think we're incredibly well stocked. If you go below that, someone like Mark McGuinness, who's with the 21s, who's been with McCarthy and Cardiff, who's uh, getting his game and has been getting his game over the next while, is probably one who might be in that next generation. But again, you are then reliant on English football and who gets the chance and who gets the game. Exactly, yeah. yeah. What are you looking to see in particular next week, Kenny? Are you gonna? What sort of expectations will you be rocking up to Lansdowne well, Road next Nathan Thursday? Gonna, gonna, you're going to drift into central midfield and start naming your players <laughs> there. <laughs> right. in front. That's next week. You've done the easy bit. You've done the easy bit. Oh, you're just concentrating that's, on the, that's on the, the, the defensive talent. line. Yeah, yeah. We have a defensive guru in the studio. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the, the interesting discussion is further is for, is further up the pitch. That kind of uh, the balance, you know, how that kind of midfield and forward areas, and how Stephen sees that going forward, but. Now, the defensive side, I, th- I think it would be interesting in the Portugal game. I don't think we've really been stress-tested too much in these last two games. I think we've played some good football. Um, we've all been excited in terms of the quality of the football which we've played. Chances created, goals scored in the past couple of games. Some little like, combinations, some little partnerships which are developing around the pitch. And that's all well and good. But I don't think uh, defensively we've really been we've we've been tested in the last two games, and there's been just a couple of situations both those games, Azerbaijan and, and Qatar, when I just feel as if we've been a, we've been a little bit open, we've opened ourselves up a little bit to kind of a uh, uh, counter attack transitions. Those two teams have got uh, got at us occasionally, probably not good enough in terms to really kind of ram it home. So that's what I'm interested in against Portugal in terms of the team on the pitch, the attacking qualities which we've seen over the past couple of games. But also that real kind of defensive uh, mindset, that defensive structure, which has to be on the same level as well. That has to be the same. You know, we can't be heading up there in terms of the quality of football which we're playing. And then once we turn over possession, all of a sudden we're all over the place. We're open and teams are playing through us in the better teams. There were signs, I thought, maybe against Qatar that they were getting a bit better than that. And just to go right back to the start of the conversation and maybe a comparison with Manchester United and them playing three at the back, that like the pace of Iran makes such a difference for United to be able to push high up the pitch that Ireland quite often when they lose the ball and there's probably a bit of maybe naivety in midfield at times that they all push up and then they lose the ball and there's this huge gap but against Qatar definitely you could see Shane Duffy the second forwards lost the ball he sort of stepped 10 yards into the opposition half and the other two centre halves were the ones to drop back so at least there's some pressure because geez, like it's been a sort of constant of the last year that when Ireland lose the ball the defence head for home as quick as they can and suddenly there's this massive gap opening up like is, that, is that how that needs to work that one of the centre halves applies some pressure? Yeah I don't think it's necessarily the centre half so we're, we're talking about Manchester United the individual qualities of players there Fred, McTommy their defensive attributes I don't think any of them's a natural <coughs> defender so if I look at uh, say uh, air midfield uh, say as a, as a comparison I think well who's, who's the natural defender there who's got those natural defensive instincts who when you turn over possession of the ball not, I'm not talking about necessarily have, going and pressing straight away but when you haven't got the ball and they're sat in that central midfield who understand what's required in terms of cutting off passing lanes into opposition forwards in terms of when to go and put pressure uh, on the ball when to drop into space when to track runners when to pass them on slide, giving good information sliding people into different areas so I don't think we have an abundance of them in, in, in the squad I look at Jeff Hendrick I think he's been great the past couple of games it's been great to see how well he's played but Jeff for me is someone that you've got to take the breaks off you've got to get him, let him go and play he likes to get himself in advanced areas and go and link up with uh, players in forward areas of the pitch so he actually likes to vacate that central area of the pitch and you want to encourage him to do that because he's actually good at it so again that's putting a lot of pressure on the, on the player then alongside him Josh Cullen is probably the player for me, probably best suited that kind of understands that role, who will kind of sit in there in that kind of fulcrum in that central midfield, who will kind of sense danger. Now, Josh isn't like Kante in terms of his ability to get quickly over the ground or a physical specimen in terms of do- dominating that area of the pitch, but I think he understand, understands that role. Conor Horahan for me is somebody, again, a ball playing midfielder, and someone for me who's at his best the closer he gets to the opposition goal. We know the delivery's got into the box. You know, once he gets towards the arse from mm. the opposition box, particularly wide areas, puts great delivery into the box, kind of good range of passing. Seems to have fallen slightly down the pecking order. Yeah, but, but Connor for me doesn't look like somebody at his very best when he's asked to play a like, defensive role in that centre. Connor go and got make tackles, wrestle the ball off pay, be a dominant physical presence in that area of the pace. So he was great for Swansea when he went there last season, he was playing in that sort of more advanced sort of number eight kind of yeah exactly so that's what I've always seen and for me I always I'm, with Jeff and Connor I'm always in my mind I'm thinking I'm pushing them mm. higher up the pitch 
get closer to the opposition goal, get cl- in closer contact with your front two, front three, and go and play in little combinations and whatever. They're good enough to do that. But then it's all about, again, that kind of balance. What are you leaving behind you? Are you leaving yourself a little bit more open to those kind of quick counters and transitions? So, again, that will be interesting. I think that's the area for me that will be interesting against Portugal. If we strike that balance right in terms of committing players high up the pitch and offering it, 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 a threat from an attacking point of view, but also dropping into really solid defensive shape and having players who are very comfortable actually out of position yeah. and actually un- understand their role, particularly in those central midfield areas.